Hello and welcome to another LFC uh, Day Trip Special for the Women's Show. Uh, today I am joined by Liverpool's new signing, Megan Campbell. Megan, how are you doing? I'm not too bad, thank you for having me. How are you? Yeah, not too bad, not too bad. So, for those of you who don't know, uh, Megan joined us in the summer from uh, Man City. Uh, so unfortunately uh, for Megan, um, picked up quite a, quite a serious injury on uh, was it pre-season, Megan. Was it against Celtic? And so you've you yeah, just we recently joined us back in South. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, you're back. How long have you been back in training now? About a week. So, back to normality. Okay, okay. Good, good, good. Uh, so, uh, from from your sort of obviously not interviewing many professional footballers, what's the challenge like? Be uh, when you have to obviously miss, miss a lot of football because of. A long-term injury. What sort of challenges is that take for you? Because obviously, it can't be the same not seeing um, your teammates every week. Yeah, definitely. I think the isolation bit, for, probably from the team, is is one of the worst uh, situations that you have to go through while you're injured. Um, but at the same time, you've also got the goal of seeing the girls on the weekend when they're playing or they're playing midweek in the cup, and it's that it's that like ambition to get back on the grass as soon as you can and. I think it's nice that we have a little bit of a crossover when we were doing our rehab in the morning, myself, Evie. We were able to then catch up with the girls as they were coming in, just previous to us leaving. So we still had some sort of integration conversation, but like the, that isolation when you're injured is probably one of the worst, if not the worst bits about it, because you're not around the team, you're not around travelling away on away trips, you're not... You're missing all the banty. You're missing, obviously, being at a new team. Like I haven't really met a lot of the girls before, um, and so it's been it's been a lot difficult for for me, a lot more okay, difficult okay. than I probably would have liked it to be. That's a, I know you wouldn't wish it on someone, but does it make it easy that you've got someone to rehab with? Yeah, hundred percent. I think if anything, I'm kind of I'm happy that Evie um, Smith is not going through it on her own because obviously I've. I've been and I had injuries previously at many occasions and I think for an 18 year old to go through such a serious injury and what she has is the exact same as what I have it's without the surgery um I think it, it's, it's it can take a, a massive toll on your mental health um especially when you're a kid and all you want to do is play football and you don't understand anything outside of that uh, and it proper it proper challenges you mentally uh, more so than sometimes physically and so I'm glad that I was next to her and being able to rehab with her and, and her being able to have that buddy for me of course it's difficult but I'm so happy that I was just being able to be there for her and, and help her in part of her rehab journey Excellent, excellent Have you been impressed with some of the uh, the youngsters we've we've got at Liverpool, uh, especially in defence uh, young uh, Hannah Sillock uh, did really well uh, in the, the County, Cup, County Cup game sorry, against uh, Blackburn, she did really well and I think she did very well against Sheffield United yeah, we call her the, the Virgil van Dijk of a, of a women's team. Um, she's so calm on the ball and she possesses the ball brilliantly and there's nothing fa that phases her. And it's crazy to think that the kid's only turned 17. I mean, it makes me feel dead old when I'm playing next to her and training next to her. But to see, like, it looks like she's played the game for years upon years. She's that calm and collected on the ball. And against um, in the County Cup against Blackburn, I think she led the line out the back four you know like she was the one who was um going forward pressing putting the hard tackles in and setting the tone for us which is what we needed against a tough team like Blackburn and the, that performance that I was able to see firsthand is incredible and obviously hopefully she'll go from strength to strength and she's continuously training with us now which is nice for her progression and her, um her development cool so let's let's concentrate more on yourself so uh you also how, how what was your football journey like you know so it was a um, Growing up, growing up in Ireland, uh, you played for a few teams. Uh, St. Francis, I think, was your first club. Did you always want to sort of be a footballer? Was it always a defender you wanted to be? Or so, so what was your um, break into football? Yeah, I think from the age of eight, dad just like brought me into football. My dad and my uncle, Heather, um, were the ones who introduced me to football. And I played with like a few local teams back home. So Grove Rangers, Boyne Rovers, um, Money Moore, and then into Drogheda United before I ended up moving to Dublin. Because at the time in Drogheda, where I live, it's a small area and there wasn't female football teams and there was no, I think, stepping stone and stepping ladder for me to be able to keep progressing if that's what I wanted to do. And um, all of the football and all of the big areas in football was in Dublin, um, which meant a lot of travel for my dad to be able to have to take me 
to and from training after work most evenings, um, which is 40 minute drive there and back. Plus he's got to stand and watch me train. Um, but I think without them two, I probably wouldn't have been without my dad and my mom and also my sisters because they sacrificed time with my dad. Um, because he was with me a lot of the time so without without my family I definitely wouldn't be where I am today but that was pretty much the start of my journey was playing with boys all the way up until 16 under 16 under 14 where females then couldn't go into the the changing rooms anymore in terms of the rules and stuff like that which is understandable um, and so then I had to find a women's team um, and they put a, t- a team together called Boy and Rovers um, back home and then, like I said, for progressions, I had to move to Dublin. Um, I think I was playing there maybe three, four years. Um, and then I got the offer to go to America. Um, so, yeah, that was the next on the list was to go to go to America, to Florida State. That's fine. So what did you uh, study in America? I studied social science. So previous to me leaving, I went to um, IT Carlo, so um, Institute of Technology in Carlo. Um, in Ireland and I studied two years there and got a diploma in sport and exercise and was due to finish that course and then obviously Mark Corian from Florida State came in for me and said we want you to come out and, and join us out here we'll transfer your credits out so I was fortunate enough that they were able to do that and when I went out there I earned a bachelor's degree in uh, social science so I have somewhat two degrees but it's it's nice to have something to, to come back on because education was massive for me and it was a big driver in in what I wanted to do as well as play football um, because I know Good. football doesn't last forever. Yeah. So in terms of uh, st- stylistically, um, I spoke to Kerry Holland in the past. Um, is it more physical um, in America than it is, say, in the WSL? Or uh, I think Kerry seems to think it's a bit more technical in, in England, but it, there's a lot more athleticism or physicality in, in the American game. Is that a fair assumption or is that a bit of a myth? Um, I think with the university that I was at, the athleticism was just... It was there from full stop because it was that many internationals. So it had to be there. The the standards were that high. Um, physically, I think it would be similar to WSL now. As a kid, when you're younger, obviously you feel like the physical side is probably a lot harder. And then as you mature and you're playing in the WSL, you're playing in the in the championship, it is it, it probably equals itself. But I'm a lot mm. older now than I was then. So yeah, probably when I was there, it was a lot more physical and um, technical it was definitely technical at Florida State. Okay, cool, cool. So then you got the move uh, back to back uh, to England to play for Man City. I think you were Man City for five years. Um, yeah. FA, FA Cup winner. Uh, is it two assists in the final? Yeah, <laughs> that was a, it's a nice story. I, I actually done this injury previously when in 2016, obviously I joined City and um, that August I done ruptured my ATFL, same injury I've done now. Um, it left me out of the game for about six to eight months. Unfortunately, I had some setbacks within that. Um, and then building back up, we progressed in the cup and, and ended up getting to the FA Cup final. And I think for me to be involved with the squad on such a massive day, a massive occasion in Wembley Stadium, um, I was buzzing about um, just even if I could be involved in the squad. And then on the Saturday before we travelled down, Nick's called the team out and he's named me in the starting eleven and. As he's gone from the keeper to the full back to the centre back, and as soon as I heard my name, I didn't hear the rest of the team because I was just in absolute shock that he'd named me in the starting eleven. And yeah, I just relished the the opportunity to be able to be there and and perform on the biggest stage. And my dad was there, my cousin, my uncle, so it was brilliant to see that the tricolour flying flying high in in Wembley Stadium. So yeah, it was a great day all round. Awesome. I was seeing that uh, your yeah, compatriot uh, Nifa has just got her, I believe it's her ninety eighth cap for Ireland. Yeah. Um, for yourself, you've got uh, over forty caps now. Um, obviously, once you get yourself back into the Liverpool squad, is, is that the aim to try and get past the fifty cap mark or push on further? Yeah, one hundred percent. I mean, every time you put on the green jersey, it's an absolute honour, and um, to even be selected for the squads coming up because I know there's so so much new talent and fresh talent coming up as the kids are doing unbelievably now and the development is incredible for the Irish setup. So for me it's a challenge to even get back into the setup. Um but if I can do that successfully then I mean of course I would like to get as many caps as I can as possible and help the national team where I can. But yeah, like I said, to wear the, the green jersey is an absolute honor and I love it every time. Cool, cool. So how did the uh, the move to Liverpool come come about then in the summer? Um Um I think I was ready I was ready for a change. Um I had spoke to Matt Beard when the job in Liverpool became available 
and I don't know if he he said this, but I, I joked with him saying, "I hope you're coming back up northeast." And uh, he started laughing and he said, um, "Oh, nothing. I'm here. Whatever." He, we were still obviously at Bristol at the time, and um, so I was hanging on to hope that when the job became available, because I had spoken to him previously when he was at West Ham. He wanted me to join them there, and unfortunately, things didn't happen, and I stayed at, at City um, another few years. But the opportunity then, when it came about to Liverpool, I thought I need a fresh start. And then I had gotten to a conversation with Matt, and um, he seemed keen, and he, he's very much driven on the person rather than the player alone. And I, I love that about him. Like he's um, he's all about player welfare and stuff like that and, and driving and getting the best from players not just on the pitch but off it as well um, and he's quite a family man which I love my family so it, it's it's massive for me and when I had the opportunity to come to Liverpool I was never going to turn it down, what a club <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant uh, so for people who ha- haven't seen seen you play, uh, what sort of how would you describe your stylistic, stylistically uh, you play uh, left back um, and you're known for your uh, long throws as well yeah, um, I play. I can play centre back or I can play uh, left back. Quite physical. I think that's in in the Irish genes. Uh, everyone's quite physical when you when you play for Ireland or when you're from Ireland. Um, it's ingrained in us. So yeah, I've definitely got a physical side to me. I'm not afraid to put a a high tackle in, but I also like to get, to get on the ball ball and try and play um play out from the back where and when possible, and like to join the attack if and when I can. Um, but yeah, like you said, I've got. I've got quite a quite a long throw that has been utilised on many occasions, both for national team and previous clubs. So, I'm looking forward to being able to to get back on the grass and hopefully showing the Liverpool fans a little bit about that. Because I, I know me and Fernie have had chats in pre season previous to my injury, <laughs> saying I can't wait for for me to throw it in and they're to head it into the goal. So yeah, um, I've got no uh, no worries that when that comes. Uh, It'll be as long as it was previously, but I'm looking forward to definitely getting back on the grass with the girls. Yeah, I mean, with you being back in train now, uh, you you travelled up to Durham uh, for the the big away trip there. Um, obviously, Liverpool took uh, quite a, quite a fo- uh, following. Obviously, I think I came up on the coach with them as well. Um, so, are you looking forward to getting your first game in front of the fans? Yeah, I can't wait. I mean, it's it's edging closer and closer, and. I'm, I've got everything crossed that everything stays the way it's going and it's going smoothly at the minute. So, yeah, once I keep my head down, I keep working hard. Um, I'm looking forward to, to running out onto hopefully Prenton Park um, very soon and, and playing in front of the amazing fans that we have at Liverpool. Awesome, awesome. Yeah, so, I mean, four points clear, you know, um, so we're guaranteed to be top at Christmas. So it's a, a nice, nice start to the season. Um Especially at the back of two very tough away games, uh, Durham and Sunderland, and never all, all the time I've followed Liverpool women, they are they are always the two of the most difficult away games we we've had. So I think I think the team show a lot of character and a lot of control in those sort of games. Um, and Taylor Hines is uh, doing well for us at uh, left back at the moment. Yeah, she's doing incredibly. I think uh, she's been one of my standout players in the season so far within the squad. Um, she's not only a, like a great defender, but Obviously, her ability to go forward and to get on the end and um, stick her head on a few a few balls ending up in the back of the net for us is obviously amazing. I think there's been a lot of players that have been standout for us. Obviously, Leanne Kiernan being one, Carrie Allen through the middle. But I think all round, everybody has played their part so far this season. And I think we're quite a unit. Like there's, The togetherness within the squad is incredible. And it's probably one of the best I've ever been a part of in a team. Um Everyone's fighting for each other. Everyone wants ev- everyone to do well and achieve achieve things and be successful. So I think that mentality going into every game, I think it's showing and it's coming out on the pitch when we're playing together. Um, like you said, Durham away and then Sunderland away. It's two tough games and could be decisive come the end of the season. But I know January 9th, we've got Blackburn away, which has been somewhat our bogey team, I've been told, mm. um, for quite some time. So you can say, yeah, we'll be top at Christmas, but I know most of the girls, and if not all of them, as well as the coaching staff, will want to be top by four points at Christmas and not just by the one. So I think the game against it on the 19th is going to be, you know, massive for us to to get another three points and to keep that gap as as much as we can. Which um, you've got a, a famous granddad, I believe. Yeah, I do. Um, unfortunately, he's passed away now, but my granddad was um, a big part of the the Dubliners, the Irish 
legends band um, that have played all over the country and all over the world um, for many, many years. Uh, he's my dad's dad and, you know, I was very close with him and every time he got the opportunity to come and watch me play for Ireland, he was there. Um, so, yeah, he's he's sadly missed, but he's a legend all around within the family. Excellent, excellent. So let's get your opinion on your teammates then, because uh, I, I like to ask this bit of fun. Um, who's the biggest joker in the team? <laughs> Um, biggest joker, Bo probably. Bo, both thinks she's got a bit of banter about her, you know. So I'll give her that one, make her build her confidence <laughs> up. But I'll, I'll give that Bo. She's never stops joking about. Yeah. Okay. The other one that keeps getting mentioned is Ash Hodson. She seems to be at the scene of a lot of crimes when, when it comes to wind ups. <laughs> Between her and Mel, they're a dangerous duo. Like so dangerous. <laughs> um. But yeah, she just laughs at everything. Mel's quite witty. Quite like dry humoured um, and then Ash is just like an absolute giggler like she will laugh at everything oh, it's brilliant a good combo good 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 uh, who's the best trainer best trainer I think we've got quite a few you know um, obviously only being back around it now so the girls aren't there they're, in a, they're on international duty but I, I don't think I could narrow it down to one I think there's there's too many if not everyone who's um, what I've seen this season is it probably sounds like a cliche answer, but everyone's so driven and determined to to be successful this season to get the team promoted. I think the work ethic and the work rate within training has been incredible thus far. Brilliant. And who would you say is the most skillful? Skillful. Um, Mel, probably Mel. Yeah, Mel. her feet. Are I, I must admit, rapid. I think I've done three. I've done three interviews, and everyone says Mel. <laughs> Mel, see, Mel or Jan. Jan. Jan's like so difficult to play against because. She slows you down and she can go left and right because you don't oh, okay. know which, which direction she's going to go. So Jan is quite skillful and she knows how to create fouls and stuff, which is good for us. But Mel Lol is, her pace is frightening when she gets going at you. You just don't want to be the defender. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and chipped in with the first goal of the season against Sunderland. Uh, pretty special one as well, to be fair. Yeah, not a bad goal at all, was it? Like top bins. It took a while to come down, but when it did, yeah. I was like, wow. Wow! Yeah, if you ha- if you haven't seen Mel's goal, just honestly YouTube it. It's it's well worth a watch. It's a brilliant yeah, goal. Yeah, hundred percent. Cool. So, what when do we think we'll see you on the pitch? Or are we hoping Conti Cup against Sunderland? Or are we thinking it's is it more the FA Cup? Probably twelfth around the twelfth of December. My aim is the twelfth of December. Yeah, FA Cup. Fingers crossed. My family are over that weekend because we didn't realize we would have a game. Um, coming into the FA Cup in round three, so my mum and dad have travelled are travelling over on the ferry. Um, they were going to spend the weekend with us, do the Christmas markets and things like that. So <laughs> I'm praying that I'm praying that it's a it's a home game and we get a home draw. Um, for them to be able to come and watch me, I know that they will probably drive to wherever the game is anyway. But yeah, we it would be nice to be able to play in front of the fans on the 12th of uh, December in Prenton Park. Awesome, awesome, yeah. And then whoever does know if they if we have a home game against in the FA Cup then that's on the 12th then we've got the final league game on the 19th, 19th uh, which yeah. is Char- Charleston who who just got a, a big win um, at home to the Lionesses who were you know were closely behind us in second so what sort of challenge are you expecting from Charleston? I think they'll be physical they'll probably sit in be very compact very organised um, hard to break down I, I, I know that for a fact um, they'll be well drilled in that um, so it's, for us it's about using the ball as much as we can and um pulling them when pulling them out of position and, and then exploiting that. So hopefully come the nineteenth we'll be four points at least clear going into Christmas. Fingers crossed. But they won't crossed. be an easy side to play against, yeah. Yeah. Fingers crossed. But listen, that's great. Thank Megan, thanks very much for give, giving up your time to speak to us. Um so that's it for the show. Um so listen, if you get a chance to go to Prenton Park, please go. I mean hopefully we'll see Uh, Megan playing in the game against Charlton and obviously we'll keep an eye on your progress for the rest of the season. Until then guys, speak to you soon.